How does the brand new Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 compare when we stack it up against the iPad Air, lovingly known as the more budget side of the iPad ecosystem? Let's find out. Quick note before we dive too far into the video, nobody is sponsoring this today. Nobody provided me either of these tablets and no one sent me a grumpy email in the middle of the night explicitly telling me what to say today. Just just so we're all clear. I purchased both of these tablets with my own money and am excited to share my opinions on each of them. Because budget always enters into the decisions of tech, the first comparison I wanna make is the price and the feature set comparison from a strictly dollars to capabilities discussion. The Galaxy Tab S8 can be purchased brand new for $699. For that money, you'll get the first generation Snapdragon 8 eight core processor, 128 gigabytes of storage, eight gigabytes of RAM, and an 11 inch LCD panel. Included in the box, you'll also get the Samsung S Pen, and in certain locations, you will get the keyboard included. So, you know, you, you get a little bit ahead on the accessories when you buy the tab. The iPad Air, on the other hand, comes in at a base model price of $549, and for that money, you'll get the older Apple A14 processor, 64 gigabytes of storage, some unspecified amount of RAM, and a 10.9 inch liquid retina panel. When you line it right right up dollars to dollars. While the Tab S8 does cost more, I mean, 150 bucks out of $700 price tag, that's a lot, that's a 21% premium. But if we're just gonna lay our cards right out on the table, I do think there is 20% more value in the Tab as opposed to the Air, but that's kind of like the point of the video, right? We'll get to that as we go along. Next up, let's talk storage, because while I do think you only need so much space in a mobile device, you do have to hit a certain level to be usable, and unfortunately, one of the things that I've disliked about the iPad Air since its initial release is that 64 gigabytes of storage. It's just it's just not enough for a modern tablet to only be rocking 64 gigabytes. You can buy a 64 gigabyte SD card for like 15 bucks anymore, 120 gigabytes for about $30. I understand that the iPad Air was a pretty radical redesign from previous models, and a lot of its production budget went towards new screen, new body, new sensors, but 64 gigabytes, it's kind of rough. There is a 256 gigabyte model available, but that will set you back $749, which is a real steep markup for what is essentially not that much of an upgrade of overall storage. Of all the things we're gonna talk about today, I think memory is the biggest weakness for the iPad Air. 64 gigabytes is too low for a standard number, and 256 gigabytes is too low for a power user that needs a ton of storage. Hopefully when Apple releases the iPad Air 5, they'll bump that up, but right now, it's kind of rough. The Galaxy Tab 8 easily wins the storage wars. You already heard the specs, it comes with 128 gigabytes of storage. So even if you do nothing else to the tablet, you have doubled the space for family pictures, work PowerPoint slides, etc. But an additional benefit for the Tab S8 is that it has an expandable media slot that will allow for up to a one terabyte micro SD card. Yeah, that costs about 130 bucks extra, so that would push you into iPad Pro territory here as well, but it's nice to have the ability if you want it. Maybe in the future you decide that you want extra space in your tablet, the tab is ready to go for that. The next major comparison I wanna make is for the displays. Here, I think this is gonna be more of a personal preference thing because I think both of these displays are really nice and neither is objectively better in every single way. I think the bezels of the tab look a little nicer because they are slightly slimmer than the iPad Air. The Tab S8 also has a fast refresh rate of up to 120 hertz while the iPad Air is capped out at 60 hertz. Where I think there's room for interpretation and preference here is the iPad Air's liquid retina panel looks real sharp and it looks real nice. And I think it looks for color and contrast better than the Tab S8. Both will only hit around 400 nits of brightness, so you're not gonna see much of a difference here. And neither are what I would consider a robust HDR option if you are looking for the crispiest blacks and mind shattering contrast ratio. But personally, I don't think that's what either of these tablets are for. If you want that, both brands will have like the Tab S8 Plus or Ultra or an iPad Pro 12.9 inch. Those have the cutting edge leading displays if that's what you're looking for. Personally, I like the Tab S8 display a little better. It feels a little cleaner and it feels a little better because of that increased fresh rate. And while I've heard some folks complain about problems with pulse, width, modulation, I haven't seen them or experienced them. So again, this is personal, but I'd have to give the nod to the Tab S8. Expanding from the displays to the physical body of both of these tablets, they're pretty similar. Tablets and cell phones are all essentially the same physical devices anymore. They're just big slabs of glass with slightly different dimensions. And in this case, they both have USB-C also. The iPad is slightly wider than the Tab S8 and the Tab S8 is slightly taller than its Apple compatriot. And both are roughly the same width. There might be a difference, but when you place them next to each other, you 
can't really see it. Button layouts are pretty similar too with volume rockers on the side and lock unlock buttons either on the side or on the top. A fun note is that both tablets actually have a fingerprint biometric authentication capability built into the locking buttons. And I actually like how the iPad is laid out a little bit better. With the way the tab's lock power button is recessed a little bit, sometimes it feels like it's kind of a pain to actually press and it makes unlocking with fingerprints or taking a screenshot rather difficult. Since we're talking about biometric authentication, another win for the Tab S8 over the iPad Air is the Tab S8 also has face unlocking where the Air only has that Touch ID sensor built into the lock button. So it's the opposite of the iPad Pro where the iPad Pro had face ID but doesn't have fingerprint authentication. Here's the thing about the Tab face unlocking though. It works perfectly when I hit the lock button to start using the tablet. But when I open it from the keyboard case, it never ever works. Considering I always use the keyboard case, essentially it means the face feature isn't much help for me. Yes, if I lock it and then unlock it again, it's great, but what I want to do is open my tablet and just have it unlock on its own. Maybe there's a setting or a feature I haven't found yet or I'm doing this wrong, but it's kind of frustrating for me. The next major comparison I want to tackle is accessory support. Here is another really close call between the two devices. Both of these brands have a whole range of accessories that you can buy to tailor these tablets into more than just a YouTube watching machine. And you can tailor these into something that can meet your specific needs. Both have pencil attachments. Again, the Samsung S Pen comes with the S8 where you have to buy the second generation Apple Pencil. When it comes to keyboard cases, I like the standard keyboard case more for the tab than the Air. The Smart Folio is fine, but the basic case for the tab is far better. If you want to spend some money and get the best keyboard experience. The S8 has a pretty mediocre looking case that wouldn't work from your lap, while the iPad Air has the Apple's Magic Keyboard, which is the single best tech accessory that I've ever seen. Both high-end keyboards are very expensive though, so if you are trying to stay on budget, the basic options work well, and it comes out for the tab. When it comes to the pencils, I like the S Pen way more than I like the Apple Pencil. I don't think that's functionality-wise, I just like the tip style on the S Pen. It makes it feel more natural to write, and because of that smoother option, writing on the tab actually makes a lot more sense to me and I've been doing it more than writing on anything with the air. Though if we're going to look if we're going to look from a macro level, I think we'll have to call it a draw on accessories. Both are too similar to give one a solid advantage, but it's good to know that whichever you get, they'll be capable of being customized for your needs. The next thing I want to compare is the software and operating systems. Now, I'm not going to turn this into an iPad OS versus Android video. So, we're going to talk about these at a high level and again, this will come down to what you prefer. And I know I know there are a ton of folks out there that would never try an Apple tablet, and some of you out there would never want to touch an Android tablet. That's your, it's your prerogative. You buy the tech that works for you. So what I want to talk about is the software from a functionality standpoint, like what can these do? The iPad Air is an iPad all of the time. This could be good or bad, depending on how you like iPads. The system is smooth, it works great, and it's so overly optimized that you will be constantly shocked at how well individual applications work. iPads are not the best for file management or multitasking. Yes, Apple's made some strides on that front over the past couple of years, but it's still not great. The Tab S8, on the other hand, has two modes. The first is tablet mode, which works very similar to the iPad. You'll get smart gestures, quick selection, customization, and access to the Google Play Store. If we were talking about this one mode, even though it, it would upset some of the diehards, I would think that the tablets work essentially the same way. But the Tab S8 has a second mode called Samsung Dex that turns it from a tablet into what is essentially a Chromebook. And it sounds goofy and like an unnecessary addition to a tablet, but I absolutely love this feature. You can use it either on the tablet by itself to have a Chromebook laptop with you, or you can plug the S8 into an external monitor and get a very robust computer level operating system. I wouldn't expect AAA gaming from this mode, but I primarily do office type work about 12 hours a day, and this meets and exceeds my needs at every level. It works great for email, for attending and running meetings, for creating and working on PowerPoint stuff. You can get the whole Microsoft suite of apps here, and they work pretty darn well for running on a tablet. If you are a content creator looking for a mobile studio, I'm still waiting for LumaFusion to come out on the tab and give us a very robust creation suite. So it's kind of still out on whether this will work too well for that. But for the office worker side of my life, this is amazing. It means I get to save a ton of room and headache by carrying this little thing around. I, I love it. The iPad does not have the same kind of functionality. It can be great for productivity, but you will have to accept a lot of limitations and clunkiness for that functionality. And while you can plug it into an external display, it's not really usable. So from a functionality standpoint, I think the Tab S8 is 
easily the winner. Plus, if we were talking about functionality, the camera system on the Tab S8 is clearly better too. On the back, you'll get a more robust camera array, but for a tablet, who cares? Don't nobody want to be the tablet picture taker at the family or school event. For me, what I think is the most important is the front facing camera. And here, Samsung does it right. How many of you out there, and yes, I want you to tell me in the comments below. How many of you out there take a meeting or a video call while holding a tablet in portrait mode? Sure, I'll do that with my phone, but honestly, I can't think of a single time that I've ever done that with a tablet. It's always in landscape mode. Like, look at these right now, just setting them down now. They're in landscape mode, set into some kind of a stand or a case. And thankfully, Samsung placed the camera at the top of that mode and not at the top of portrait mode like the iPad. Plus, this is a very nice ultra wide camera that looks pretty darn good too. I'm not I'm not actually used to Apple losing the camera tech uh, war, but here the tab pulls ahead. However, when we dig into power, it is a little different. I think both tablets are plenty powerful for the things that you would expect a tablet to run, like all of that software and operating systems we mentioned earlier. But power for me, especially when it comes to mobile devices, is more about the longevity of a piece of tech and not about the whiz bang features. Here, it's gonna go in the total opposite direction. Samsung has pledged four years of updates for the tab, and that's great. I'm glad to see that they're doing this. Hopefully they have started to expand their software horizons. But Apple is really the gold standard when it comes to supporting their devices long term. The iPad Air 2 released way back in the day and it's still got iPad OS 15. And I would imagine that trend will continue with the iPad Air 4. It's only been out for a year, but I could totally see this getting the same seven year treatment or more, which means almost twice of the amount of life as the Tab 8 for far less money. Yes, like we said, I think the storage in the future will probably hold it back if the operating systems get too big, but Apple does a great job supporting all devices, so I'm not all that concerned about it. Another place where there will be significant personal preference variance is in the ecosystem surrounding the devices. The Apple ecosystem is the best technology ecosystem that I've ever used, and even though Samsung has been working on theirs, I'm sorry, but it's not the same. However, I feel like at least for tablets, that's not as important. You can't use the Apple Watch through an iPad. AirPods will work with both tablets. The only real thing you're missing here to here is iMessage and FaceTime, both of which could be done through just a phone. So it's not really that big of a hamperance. So while the ecosystem is important, I do think these tablets are the least reliant on said ecosystem, which is why the tab has become such a big part of my tech kit. Both of these are great tablets. I think both are fantastic at what they do, and I think both provide very good value for what you get. However, despite being fully in the Apple ecosystem, I do think the Tab S8 is the better tablet, especially for students or for office workers. And if you like this video and you wanna see a little bit more on the Tab S8, you can find my one week later video by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.